What's up guys? This right here is the new Jack Wolf Knives Pioneer Jack. Super cool new knife and exciting release for JWK. This one is coming out on Friday, September 22nd. There's a few things about it that are pretty cool, exciting, different for Jack Wolf Knives. We'll get into all of that. Also want to show you a couple knives that we got back from Knife Modders that turned out really cool. The first thing we should probably talk about is the pattern. Uh, as you know, with Jack Wolf Knives, you get a lot of classic slip joint patterns. You get the modern interpretation of timeless designs. So what's the design on this one? Well, it's a classic farmer's knife. A lot of people are going to call this a sodbuster. The term sodbuster, though, is trademarked by Case Knives. So this isn't being marketed as a sodbuster by Jack Wolf Knives. This is the Pioneer Jack, which honestly is a really cool name for this style of knife. Dope artwork as usual. And you also get the POG sticker, cloth, and the leather slip. Sodbuster, though, it's kind of like Kleenex. You know, people are going to call it a sodbuster. So with this pattern, we get a really nice drop point blade. The first drop point blade for Jack Wolf Knives. Take a look at that swedge, too. Really good looking blade. S90V steel, which he's been doing lately. And this version is my first one with the hand satin finish. There's a lot of things about this knife that remind me of the Cyborg Jack. Knife Modders did a crazy good job on this one. Turned out so cool. With Ben's take on this pattern, it still kind of has a little bit of a futuristic or angular look to it, like with the Cyborg. But one of the big differences that you're going to notice with the Pioneer Jack, compared to most of the other Jack Wolf knives, is the thickness especially towards the tip, which is awesome for this pattern. You know, being a farmer's knife, being a working knife, you want it to have a little bit more meat on its bones. Whereas a lot of previous releases for Jack Wolf knives were designed, I feel like anyways, to be the ultimate slicing machines, right? With that thin hollow grind, plus the good ergos too. I mean, these things are just meant to slice and slice and slice and to keep that edge for a long time. Now, the one thing you should never do with your pocket knife is pry, obviously, but especially with some of these ones, man, like they did get pretty delicate towards the tip of the knife. And just look at the difference here. Bam, that is a thick mama jama. So you are gonna notice quite a bit of difference there. It's still a hollow grind and it still slices really, really well. So as you can see, it still just absolutely shreds through that cardboard like nothing. So you're not going to have a problem with the slicing abilities, I don't think, but uh, you, you get some added confidence in the sturdiness of the tip of the blade. There's also some really cool new handle materials. We have Ultim for the very first time. That one looks really cool. And I think for the second time now, we have the Smooth Titanium, this one with the hand satin finish, or the Black Jigged DLC, Murdered Out, looks really cool and the return of Toxic Storm and Dark Matter Blue. Let me know which one you guys think is the coolest down in the comments. Excellent walk and talk as per usual. I'm gonna say with these pull weights, about a seven and an eight. Super jumpy, sounds great too. Now one thing I was a little bit curious about just from looking at the pictures was the pinchability here uh, for opening the blade and really it's not that bad obviously you know there's other releases that have a lot more blade exposed like the venom jack i think is probably the best example of easy to pinch i mean you have so much there to work with but you can't do that with every knife and this is a farmer's knife sawbuster pattern and this is what you get and staying true to the designs is always a priority for ben and honestly, I don't think people are going to have uh, too much trouble there. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. The fit and finish, the workmanship is insane. Like, it's just insane. Like I said earlier, this one does kind of have some angularity to it, but the edges are chamfered really well, so you don't have any jagged points, but it's just a super clean and satisfying aesthetic. And with the Jack Wolf Knives Signature Triple Flutes. And this one being the smooth titanium, you just have a slab of titanium. But these other ones with the inlays are still going to have the integral titanium liner and bolsters that are one piece on either side. Backspring, by the way, fully 
and closes all the way to there. On camera, that tip looks a little closer than it is. I've tried. You cannot touch the tip through there. So lined up nice. The centering is perfect, like dead center. And just seriously, like everything about it is perfect. Should I keep this as is, the plain titanium, or see if Knife Modders would be willing to do that one for me as well? Part of me sees this as just a big empty canvas that they could do all kinds of cool things with. On the other hand, I am a sucker for the plain tie look too, so I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. Fits perfect in the included slip, and these are really nice quality by the way. I do carry and use these ones pretty frequently too, but I also like getting some slips from Northwoods Leatherworks, Sage Grouse Leather. They do some really cool stuff too. All right, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the new Pioneer Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Definitely one that's worth checking out. And if there's a variation that you're interested in, I highly recommend you hop on it come Friday because some of those do sell out pretty quickly. You can check Jack Wolf Knives' website for a list of all the dealers. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. Have a good week.